All right, and we are back. So let's see here. We got that going. And let's see left off. All right, so what I want to do first of all is I want to work through an arbitrary example of demonstrating this nonsense right here. All right, so actually, let me see something really quick. Uh, okay, are we, are we, yeah, we're good. Okay. Okay. And we are good. Okay. So let's see here. So what I want to do is I would like to work through an example finding a force vector. So I'm going to have a force of magnitude oh let's say 20 newtons acts along a line between points A and B. Um, A and B have coordinates as follows. A, let's give A coordinates, uh, notice I'm using parentheses, not brackets, because these are coordinates. Negative 2 meters, I'm just pulling some random coordinates out of my head. 3 meters, comma 1 meter. And B has coordinates, let's say 1 meter, comma, negative 2 meters, comma, 2 meters. So let me draw this out and show what's going on. Oh, that looks terrible. It's bad even for me. Okay, so we're going to have our x, our y, and our z axis. Our x, y, and z axis. This is z axis. Um, so, uh, point A would be at negative 2. I'm not going to try to get this with any kind of accuracy. I just want to, I just want to make sure this is like in the general correct quadrant or octant, if that's the right word for it. Um, negative 2, positive 3, and over 1. So like, it would be over here somewhere. That would be A. That would be point A. And B would be at 1 meter, uh, negative 2 meters, and 2 meters. So it would be down here somewhere. So this would be B. Then the line between them would be line AB. So let me just use a blue line, for instance. This is line AB. Or more appropriately, vector AB. <clears throat> so the first thing I'm going to do is to get oh and uh, also let me just let me just finish my drawing here. So vector AB, so we have we have AB. Then I'm going to have lambda AB, the unit vector of line AB. And then I'm going to have a force F, which acts along this line. Force F acts along this line. So my final goal is I want F in terms of its XYZ coordinates, or components, not coordinates. So let's get all that stuff. And while I'm at it, I'll probably get the theta x, theta y, theta z, just to demonstrate how to get all that. Okay, so first I need to get, uh, yeah, I need to get line AB, vector AB. If 
find AB. So I'm going to say that AB is equal to, it's just the difference of the coordinates. So it's final minus initial, so it's going to be 1 minus negative 2, comma, uh, negative 2 minus 3, all this in meters, comma, 2 minus 1, equals 3 meters, comma, negative 5 meters, comma, 1 meter. If I didn't screw the math up on that, 3 meters, negative 5 meters, 1 meter. Questions on any of that? <coughs> it's straightforward, just doing final minus initial. Yes? Because it's defined as vector AB, you always do B minus A, correct, right? Yes, generally, if this is vector AB, I'm always doing B minus A. If, exactly, and it would have the same, uh, the same, the XYZ components would have the same magnitude but opposite sign. So this would be like negative 3, positive 5, negative 1. Okay. So, anyway. If you if I made this vector B A instead of A B, the the values would be constant, but the positive negative would switch. Yeah, because because all you're doing is you'd be doing initial minus final instead of final minus initial. You'd be switch here. You'd be doing negative two minus one instead of one minus negative two. Let me put this in parentheses just to illustrate that. Okay, so we have that. Now we need lambda AB, the unit vector of line AB. Find lambda AB. All right, um, first of all, this is going to be equal to essentially AB divided by the magnitude of AB. So we may not be able to fit all of this on the page, but that's okay, we can use another page. We got plenty more. Or we can always make more, it's digital. Okay, so the first thing to do this, I actually need to get magnitude of AB. And this is just going to be the square root of the sum of the squares. So this is the square root of 3 squared plus 5 squared plus 1 squared. Or the square root of, let's see, that's uh, 1, 9, 25, 35. The square root of 35. And so um, lambda AB then... is going to be equal to um, 1 over root 35 <coughs> times 3 meters, comma, negative 5 meters, comma, 1 meter. And that comes to, okay, I'm just going to do the, do you all mind if I do this in just rough, just messy decimals, is that okay? Okay. Um, I could do this in exact form, but I'm feeling lazy, so I'll just do this in um, ugly decimals. Uh, let's see, 1 over root 35, and lambda AB is then equal to 0 0.507, comma, negative um, point, or negative 0 0.507. 845 comma 0 0.169 like so so now we have lambda AB any questions on how I got that unit vector oh we should yeah if we do this right let's find out let's the, the so the question was um, if I try to find the magnitude of this, will I get 1? Let's find out. If we did it right, we should. So let's find out. What is, so let's actually just check to make sure we're doing this right. Square root of 0 0.507 squared plus 0 0.845 squared plus 0 0.169 squared. Let me throw that in my calculator, see what I get. Square root of 0 0.507 squared plus 0 0.845 squared plus 0.169 squared, and I get 
eight two. You know what? That looks pretty close to one to me. So the the only reason it's not is because of our rounding. So that is indeed a unit vector. So it is indeed a unit vector. So it's not an i, j, k unit vector in the sense that it's not, it is, well, yes, it's made of i, j, and k, but it's not, it is not literally an i, a j, or a k, but it's still a unit vector. Okay, so uh, we need to move on. Uh, now we need to find, actually, we're almost done uh, once we have that. So uh, any questions so far? Huh? Vector of the whole thing, of the line of action. So yes, we find the vector of the line of action. Then we find the unit vector of line of action. In fact, let me notate this. Uh, no, lever arm is something different. That's when we get to, the line of action is the line of action. So. Um, AB again is the um, vector of line of action. This is the unit vector of line of action. Just as a reminder as you can see in my glorious, wonderful handwriting. Okay, any questions? All right. And finally, we have one third step. Three, uh, find vector f. Well, vector f is simply going to be equal to um, the magnitude of f times the unit vector of its line of action. So if I go back, um, I was told the magnitude of this was 20 newtons, 20 newtons times our unit vector, which is the uh, 0.507, uh, point, and, and note the unit vector has no units, 0 0.507 comma, negative 0.845 comma 0.169 and I simply multiply that out and this comes to um, vector f is 10.14 newtons comma negative 16.9 newtons, 0 0.90 newtons, comma, 3.38 newtons. Or I could also express this using IJK notation and say this is 10.14 newtons I minus 16.90 newtons K plus 3.38 newtons g, uh, j. Oh, dang it, I messed that up. Sorry about that. Derp. Much better. I, j, k. J and k, like shown. All right. So again, when I write this kind of angled bracket like this, this is just the same as writing I, J, and K. It's just a little more concise and um, a little less messy, but whatever. All right, so questions on that. Now, I would, I would like to find the angles. Find theta x, theta y, and theta z. And this will be fairly straightforward. Theta x is going to be uh, equal to, well, if we remember, the cosine of theta x is equal to, um, uh, da, da, 
pen. We remember that the cosine of theta x is equal to uh, fx over the magnitude of f. By the same logic, I can extend that and simply say theta x is equal to the inverse cosine of fx over the magnitude of f. So in this case, uh, theta x is going to be equal to the inverse cosine <coughs> of, um, let's see, my theta x is 10, my, sorry, my fx is 10.14, 10.14 newtons over 20 newtons equals, let me just, oh, what is happening? Ah. Okay. Inverse cosine of 10.14 over 20. So this is 59.5 degrees. Uh, so that's that. Theta y is equal to the inverse cosine of Fy over magnitude of F. equals the inverse cosine of negative 16.90 over 20 equals, um, let's see, the inverse cosine of 16.90 over 20, and this comes to 32.32, uh, 32.3 degrees. Yes. In this case, sign will matter, yeah, because we're not trying to reason out it or make everything positive or whatever. In this case, it will matter, yes. Um, theta z will equal to the, co the inverse cosine of, uh, just same thing, fz over magnitude of f, which is equal to the inverse cosine of 3.38 over 20. My theta y is wrong. Oh, did I not? Oh, man, thank you. To err is human. Ah, yes, thank you. It is actually 147. Thank you. You do need your sign, yes. 100. Thank you for checking my work. 147.7 degrees. Um, so the inverse cosine of 3.38 over 20, uh, which is 3.38 over 20 which I get 80.27 degrees, or 80.3 degrees. So now we have our three uh, principal angles. All right, questions on that? Uh, on this particular problem, no. I mean, that's pretty much uh, is what you need to know. But anyway, so questions on that. It's all from the positive axis. I mean, it's it's. I mean, if you think about it, if you have a three-dimensional system, you can have. If I have an angle from an angle, I can have a greater than um, 90 degree quite easily in a three-dimensional system without an angle going negative. All right. Other questions. Do the sum of the three angles have to equal anything? Uh, the the well, no. They what, the relationship is this. Uh, where did it go? Here this relationship here. Exactly, yes. It's noted by the three angles, yes. All right, so that's good for the theory. Now all I have left are a couple book problems to work through. So uh, any questions on anything we worked through uh, up to this point? All right, first of all, I have a sim one more equilibrium problem in two dimensions. Then I have a couple uh, three-dimensional problems here. Okay, this one is a fun one. I wanted to work through it because it's kind of interesting. Um, so I want to give this a try. Okay, so 2.66 in the book on page something. 
So I wanted to use this to illustrate the concept of equilibrium. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so what I have here is I have a, um, a pulley system here. And I have a, um, I have a pulley system, and I have a, um, uh, a, a weight hanging from this. So uh, this is actually going to be a little interesting. So let's try to figure this out. Now I'm going to draw a free body diagram of this system. What I have here is I'm going to have a. <coughs> first, I have my downward force. Oh, and to be consistent, let me just put, show that my plus x is here, and plus y is here. And let's say I have, um, here I ha I'm going to have 200 times 9.8. Again, this is in kilograms. I need to turn it into newtons. 200 times 9.8 which is 1,916 newtons. 1,960 newtons. Okay, so 1,960 newtons. Then I'm going to have force P here at an angle of alpha. So this one's going to be a fun one. And then we got to be careful here in that in this direction, I have a force of 2p. And the reason for this is um, we're, going, we're assuming that the tension is constant throughout the cord. We're assuming no tension is lost in the pulley, um, which actually it tells us that we can do that. So in reality, the tension will be slightly different every time it goes through the pulley. It does lose a little bit to the, due to the friction of the pulley. But we're not going to worry about that. So 2p here. Now our um, angle here, instead of using an angle, I'm going to use a force triangle. Point. Actually, let me let me draw it on the other side. I'll have more room over there. I'm going to show you a method that you don't need to use sine, cosine, and tangent for this part. So we have a uh, 0.75. Oh, derp, wrong way. Helps if I label the right one in the right place. Go away, go away, go away. We have 2.4. We have 0.75. And this is simply the hypotenuse. So square root of 2.4 squared plus 0.75 squared is 2.514. 2.514, like so. 2.514, like that. Now, so we want to find both P and alpha. and alpha. So this is going to be a tricky one, isn't it? Enjoy. Mm. Now, the easiest way to solve this would actually be to do something called balancing moments. I could take moments about a point that, that this thing passes through, but um, you don't yet know how to do that, so I can't I'll, I can't do that till, till next week, probably. But, oh well. Um, so we've got to do it the hard way. So what I'm going to do instead is a sum of forces x and y. Oh. Yeah, it come, any questions so far? Does that force triangle align with anything? Uh, it aligns with this this here. So the hypotenuse aligns with the 2p and the 2.4 aligns with the 1960 newton? Uh, no, no. Oh, yes, yes, yes. This is a, all this is just describing this here. The force triangle just describes this set of forces here. That's the only thing it really goes with. 
And the reason I, I create this force triangle is that I can use that instead of sine, cosine, and tangent, instead of using sine of the angle. I'm not actually ever going to calculate this angle. I'm not going to bother doing that. Um, it's kind of a neat system. Uh, yeah, that I mean we could. I mean, you can create the force triangle always, anytime you like. But it's most convenient when you already know the, the uh, sides of it. The side, the. Um, I believe so. I believe it is. Uh, that I just did the Pythagorean. Yeah, I just did the Pythagorean theorem. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Other questions? Okay. So. Let me show you why I did that. So first I'm going to do the sum of forces in the x-direction. Um, all the forces in the x-direction must be equal to zero. So what this says is sigma sum. F is forces. This, says, this Sigma shows I'm adding something. F shows I'm adding forces. And the subscript x shows that I'm adding forces in the x-direction. Sum of forces in the x direction is equal to zero. So this is going to be P cosine of alpha, P times the cosine of alpha, minus 2P times, now check this out. This is kind of cool, according to certain definitions of cool. Um, 0.75 over 2.5414. This is the force triangle method. That's on page 37. It's on page 37? Okay, I believe, yeah, I believe it's in the book somewhere. Yeah. Um, anyway, so yeah, I don't actually have to go and calculate the uh, sum of force. I, I don't actually have to go calculate the cosine and the tangent and all that good stuff. I don't actually have to calculate the angle. I can just use the actual dimensions of the triangle. So um, it will work out. If you, you can work through the trig and prove it if, you, if you'd like, but this will work just fine. How do you know that 0.75 is a numerator and 2.5 is a denominator? The way I kind of visualize this is, huh? It is. Yeah, it's just cosine. That's all it is, if you think about it. Because uh, remember, I would, do, I would otherwise do the cosine of the angle. And the cosine of the angle is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Exactly. I'm just skipping a step. That's all I'm doing. I'm skipping a step. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, basically, yeah, okay. So uh, now I can, actually this is not going to be that difficult to solve for alpha. Uh, because I can just go boop, boop, there goes, that's the technical term, boop. Um, is, but I'm not sure, what, but because we got to be careful, it's a metric boop, not an English boop. Because we're d doing metric units. Uh, so then we have the cosine of alpha is equal to uh, 2 times 0.75 over 2.514. Equals, so 1.5 over 2.514 is equal to um, 0 0.597. That's the cosine of alpha, not actually alpha. So from this, I can get that alpha is equal to the inverse cosine of 0.597 which is then equal to uh, 53. And I'm going to I'm going to need to use this later, so I'm going to take this to a couple decimal places. 53.369 degrees. So we have one of the answers. We want alpha and p, and I've already completed half the problem, ish. Half the problem, ish. That's yeah. okay. So questions on how I got alpha. All right, good, good. If you if you have any questions, please do not be afraid to ask. I promise not to chew your head off. I make stupid mistakes too. Okay, so sum of forces in the y direction is zero. 
All right, so now I'm going to say, uh, let's see, I'm going to have 2p, yeah, positive because this is pointing up, times 2.4 over 2.514. I can tell you now, by the time we finish the trust unit, y'all will be very good with this method. <laughs> um, plus P sine alpha minus 1960 newtons. Yes. Yes. You'd have to you'd, you'd have to use this angle here from here to here. You'd have to actually calculate that angle. You can you pick any variable. Anyone's fine. Any variable. You can pick any variable you like. I don't care. You can you can use the uh, the unpronounceable symbol that the artist Prince used for all I care. Um, <laughs> if you want to draw draw that thing out every time. Um, anyway. Okay. Oh, and this is actually, uh, but I'm going to replace the alpha here with the 53.369 degrees. And so now it's just a matter of gathering like terms, solving for p, etc. So I'm just going to do this in ugly decimals. 2 times 2.4 over 2.514 comes to 1.909. 1.909 p plus... The sine of 56.369 um, is 0 0.802, so plus 0.8025p minus, uh, actually let me just say this is equal to 1960 newtons, and then I add those together, so I'm just gathering like terms, so this is now um, 2 point seven one two P equals nineteen sixty Newtons and P is equal to nineteen sixty divided by two point seven one two. Oh not one ninety nineteen sixty. Um which is then equal to seven hundred and twenty two seven hundred and twenty two point eight Newtons. Like so. All right, and maybe that's not the right number of sig figs, but who's counting? All right, questions on that? Just a straightforward application of two-dimensional equilibrium. Yes. Um, usually I just give. It's rarely that I give you something in kilograms, but for if if I did, I would recommend 9.8 probably. Now 10 is a little too imprecise for my taste. Just, doesn't seem right. Oh, yes. How I got the triangle? This is just how I got the triangle. This is describing the direction of these forces. So 2.4 is the height of the uh, pulley. 0.75 is the width, or the x direction. This, it's right here. It's right here. And this 2.514, that's just the hypotenuse. It's a right triangle, Pythagorean, you got it. Hmm? Ah, because there's the same P in, there's three ropes here, right? This rope, this rope, and this rope. So the question is, why the 2P? Um, this one loops twice. So on this pulley here, it's pulling, this one is pulling with P, and this one is pulling with P. Both of them are pulling with force P. Now, in reality, they would be slightly different. In reality, they, the tension in each rope would be slightly different because of the um, friction losses in the pulley, but we're assuming an ideal pulley, and we don't have to worry about that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right, other questions before I move on? Okay, time to work on an actual three-dimensional problem. Ooh. Eee. Hmm. Tension in the cable is 3,900 
Okay, can you all read that? Okay. So in the book, this is problem 2.75 uh, in the Beer Vector Mechanics book. Uh, is uh, So cable AB is 65 feet long. And um, the tension in that cable is 3,900 uh, pounds or 3.9 kips. And we want to determine the X, Y, and Z components of the force exerted on the cable at anchor B, so we're interested in this point here, and the theta X, theta Y, theta Z. Once we get these, this is trivial. But the, the trick is going to actually be to find the X, Y, Z components of the force. Hmm. So this might be a little interesting. Let's see, what can we figure out? Oh, how might we do this? Well, the trick here is we're going to have a, at B, we have force F here. We have force F, and that is composed of three components, an Fy component, an Fx component, and an Fz component. And an Fz component. And we need to find each of these. So how might we do this? Hmm, how might we do this? Let's think about that. Now, this can be a little bit tricky to figure out. Okay, so we gotta play with the angles a little bit. Mm, let's see, we know that it's 56 tall. And then, do we know any of the distances to B? Let's, uh, let me look at this in the book really quick here. I want a slightly bigger picture of this. 55, thank you. 55. So let's see how to figure this one out. This is a little bit tricky, isn't it? Oh, um, ah. Let's see. We know the tension in cable AB is 3,900 pounds. And how might we solve this? Let's see. The distance from O to B. Can we find that distance? Because they give you A B is sixty five and they say oh, did they O A is did they tell us that it's fifty six? Where? Um, it shows it in the diagram. Um oh fifty six. Oh yes, 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 sorry, I missed that. I didn't miss that. Yes, yes, yes. So we know that this is sixty five feet long. Yes, 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 yes. That that is the key to solving this. This is sixty five feet long. So I am going to draw a special triangle. Well, a, not a special triangle. Special triangle in poly is like one of our 30, 60, 90 or something. But be uh, aware, of, but be mindful of this tri triangle that I'm drawing. I'm going to draw triangle O, A, B. Okay? Now, um, dimensions on this. This is 65 feet long. And this is 56 feet here like this, and this triangle will be proportional to the force triangle. So I'm going to have a, um, a force triangle of like this. Uh, let's see. This is that this symbol means proportional. So this is this is F, the, the entire force. This is Fy, and this is neither Fx nor Fz. It would actually I'm going to call this just Fxz. It's the force, and actually this is more like the magnitude of F. This is the magnitude of the force in the xz plane. So, O. A, B. So this is just O, A, and B. Questions on that so far? So these triangles are proportional to each other. Um, first, let me find the length of OB. How did you get 65 out of 
Uh, 65 is from the problem statement. It says cable AB is 65 feet long. Oh, you're fine. Uh, all right, so this is going to be 65 squared minus 56 squared equals, I know that drawing is a little fuzzy, so sorry about that. Um, uh, 65 squared minus 56 squared. And this comes to exactly 33 feet. So OB is 33 feet long. So this then is 33 feet, like so. And now I can simply use proportional triangles. Oh, and this is actually 3,900 pounds. 3,900 pounds. Now let's think about this. Uh, okay, so I'm going to use proportional triangles to solve this. I know that um, I, can ha I have this relationship here, Fy over F is equal to 56 over 65. So in other words, force triangles, forces, the components of forces are proportional to their geometry in simple systems like this. Proportional to their geometry I, I should say, to be very precise, I should say, the components of forces are proportional to the geometry of their lines of action. That's a real technical way to say that, but true. Okay, so from this, I'll be able to say that Fy is equal to F times 56 over 65, or 3,900 times 56 over 65, like so, 3,900 times 56 over 65, and that comes to 3,360 pounds. 3,360 pounds. So we have one of the components. So that's one of the components. Then uh, let's say I want to get FXZ. You can set up a similar relationship here and find that FXZ is going to be equal to 3,900 times 33 over 65. or 1,980 pounds. <coughs> now, this is not actually one of our answers, though. It's not one of our overall components. Instead, it's, it's the, the force along this line here. So what I now need to do is I need to draw another triangle, which is the triangle in the XZ plane. Uh, put that over there. Okay, so I'm going to have this. I'm going to have something um, like this. Let's see. I have 20 degrees. Point O and point uh B here. So it's this triangle here. And this is proportional to the following force triangle. It's proportional to um, the triangle. Uh, let's see. I'm going to have FXZ pointing this way towards the origin. And then uh, FZ and FX. Another right triangle. So FZ right here, FX here, and FXZ is the hypotenuse here. So we can see that FX is actually going to be negative and F. 
uh, z is going to be positive in, towards the positive z axis. All right, so um, let's see. What can we do here? Well, we need to apply this relationship. So f z is going to be, because uh, this is going to be 20 degrees now, fz is going to be fxz times the sine of 20 degrees, because it's the opposite. So that's 1,980 pounds times the sine of 20 degrees, which is 677.2 677.2 pounds assuming I didn't flub up the math and then so we have another one of our components and finally fx I'm going to put a negative on here because I know it's going to be negative is going to be 1980 times the cosine of 20 degrees. Where I'm getting the sine and cosine, again, I'm just looking at the force triangle I've created and basing them off that. So that's going to be negative 1980 times the cosine of 20 degrees, which comes to negative 1,860.6 pounds. And that's the fx, fy, and fz um, components. So in the end, I can say for, for part a, f is equal to, um, let's see, 3,360 pounds, comma, oh, let me actually do not the order that I got them in, but x, y, z first, x, y, z order. Uh, 600, uh, actually negative 1861, negative 1861 pounds, comma, uh, 3, comma, 3360 pounds, comma, 600, huh? Yeah, these are the components. 667 or 677.2 pounds. Like so. And that's uh what those come to. And then finally for point B, I won't necessarily for part B, I won't necessarily work all the way through this. It's just a simply simple straightforward application of the formula. Theta x is going to be equal to the inverse cosine just as we did previously of negative 1861 over 3900 equals theta y equals the inverse cosine of 3360 over 3900 equals etc cetera, etc cetera, etc cetera. okay questions on that so i don't feel like i need to work all the way calculate the rest of those it's pretty straightforward plugging in the formula This? FX? Oh yeah, this is always cosine. This is always cosine. It's just the... Huh? This is inverse cosine. Oh, I mean these? No, we... Oh, the negative here? Yeah, we do need to have the negatives on there. That is important on the three-dimensional case. How did I find the forces? Um, well, I know the overall force is 3900, and I simply, I'm simply applying a geometric relationship. I know that it's proportional to the, um, I know that it's proportional to the force, to the actual geometry. 
Okay, that's all. I use the geometry. I use the geometry. Okay. Yes. Any other questions? For B? Oh, I, I did. There's a triangle here and a triangle here. There's no directions. Uh, no. I mean, this is, I mean, this base, this one here in, is basically projection in the XZ plane, yes. See this here? This is FXZ, which is the projection force of the overall force. It's the XZ component of the overall force. Okay? I know. This is, I know this is quite a bit. You'll need to read through, study your book, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I know this is going to be, three-dimensional things are one of the trickiest things to wrap your head around in this course, yes. It's a, it's pulling. Well, it's a, it has to be in tension, so it must be pulling in on point on the support at point B. It has to be pulling from here upward. So it's pulling upward in the y direction. So it has a positive y component, a negative x component, and a positive z component. The sign does matter. Yes. Okay. If I were, if I had point, yes, if I had point A, the force would have a negative, uh, let's see, a positive X component, a negative Y component, and a negative Z component. Yes. All right. Huh? Yes. Uh, I made it, uh, oh, this should be negative. Wait. Okay, sorry about that. There you go. Okay. Oh. I looked at the problem. I said this. I knew this was intention, and I knew that the force here must be pointing in this direction. So I looked at the three-dimensional picture and said, "F the component in the x direction is going to be negative." Yes. Exactly. Okay. And I think that'll do it. So you do need to, you do sometimes need to look at these and apply a bit of judgment. Yes. Um, uh, my tests usually have five or six long form questions. Okay. Huh? Uh, not from the homework, but similar to the homework. <sighs> Y'all are very curious about the test. Um, Everybody else will get, depending on how I write it, uh, an hour and a half for two hours. Everybody else will get an hour and a half to two hours. You'll get ten minutes. I, I really have confidence in your ability. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway. I'm usually not that picky on sig figs. Okay. Now, let's look at this problem here. This is. This is the last problem. Okay, simmer down. We got to get through this. Quiet down. Okay. So, I want to find this is an exercise in working through um, uh, three dimensional vectors again. So, I have a tension in this cable AC of 2,130 newtons. I want to find the components of the force exerted on the plate at point C. So, let me um, get some pretty colors in here. I'm going to have a force F along the line here. And this is going to have a FY component. A negative, so it's going to have a positive Fy component, a negative Fz component, because this is positive Z here, and this is must, this going this way must be negative Z, and it will have a negative Fx component, like so. All right. Now, so we have the full geometry of this system, and we just need to apply that knowledge. Or actually, you know what? Instead of doing the uh, geometry, 
I'm going to do the method very similar to um, the, the the previous problem. Like, or not the previous problem, the, the first uh, before, but this one here. I'm going to do something very similar. I'm actually just going to go ahead and get the actual coordinates of A, B, and C. I think in this case that's going to be the easiest method. Well, not A, B, and C, just A and C. So 1, find coordinates of A and C. So A, let's see, this is going to be uh, 306, actually, no, sorry, 0. Zero comma, uh, let's see, that to me looks like, uh, do we have that height? Yeah, we do, sorry, 600 millimeters, comma, 360 millimeters. B is going to, oh, not B, C, we, we could get B, but we don't need it. C is going to have coordinates of, let's, let, well, let's see. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. 900 millimeters. Comma, uh, let's see, that looks to me like, okay, that's 360 plus 920. So that's 980, 1280, right? Well, actually, sorry, zero in the Y. But in the Z, that looks like 1280, right? 1280 millimeters. So therefore, vector, so we have the coordinates there. Then step two, find AC. And AC is going to be, be equal to, um, well, let's see, 900 millimeters, it just, it's just C minus A negative 600 millimeters, comma, uh, negative 920 millimeters. Or actually, no, sorry, positive 920 millimeters. Uh, do we? Uh, you're actually right there. Yeah, you're right. We need to find uh, CA. Thank you. We need to be very careful what we're doing because the force is actually going from C to A, yes. Thankfully, that's not very difficult to change. Um, so it actually will be negative uh, 920 millimeters. And this is going to be positive, and this is going to be negative. Okay, so questions on that. Okay, so ne next, find lambda, the unit vector along CA. And that's simply going to be, uh, uh, you know what, let me, I'm, I'm feeling fancy. Ah, not that fancy. Uh, negative 900, oh, millimeters, not meters. Millimeters. I plus 600 millimeters J minus 920 millimeters K, all of this over the Pythagorean. 900 squared plus 600 squared uh, plus 920 squared. And I'm going to throw this in my calculator. Let's shut on it. So let's see, 900 squared. 600 squared plus 920 squared. That's 14. This is actually 1420 in the denominator. Negative 900, comma 600, comma negative 920. Oh, uh, like that, divided by 1420. And I'm getting. Uh, lambda CA 
is equal to negative 0 0.634 comma 0 0.423 comma negative 0 0.647 or actually let me see if that's six oh six four eight rounding and then finally uh, f is simply going to be uh, 2130 newtons times lambda ca uh, which is 2130 newtons times negative 0.634 comma 0.423 comma negative 0.648 which is then equal to times 2130, uh, which is then equal to force F. I know we're kind of going through this quickly, running out of time here. Negative 1350 newtons, comma, 900 newtons, comma, negative 1380 newtons. And there you have it. The X, Y, the X, the Y, and the Z components of the force created by chord AC um, on the plate at point Z. Very much just a straightforward application of what we saw before the other examples. All right, questions? Yes? Um, you actually could, yes, if you wanted to work through the geometry and get the coordinates. It would be a bit more difficult to actually get all the coordinates, but yes, you could absolutely do that if you feel that's easier. Um, all right, just like you, just like with this one, we could create sub triangles and do that. I just thought it would be a bit easier in this case to work through the coordinates method. Uh, the 1280, the 1280, 1280, 1280, uh, where did it, where's the 1280? Uh, this, uh, not, uh, 360 plus 920. Yeah, it's the actual coordinates. All right, other questions? Okay, I will post the homework solutions for the first homework after this. Um, I'll be in my office until 2.30, or sorry, until 3.30 today. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to drop by then. If not, you have the homework for tomorrow, and as always, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, thank you.